So, according to this episode, monster effects cannot be negated even by God. Let me repeat this. Monster effects cannot be negated even by God. Yeah, that's a it's a line in this episode. That's a that's a that's a thing that was said. Yu-Gi-Oh says that the ideal world is one where monsters can't be negated. Ha ha ha! You, you want to give us that world? Ha ha! You you want us to be that we can do our fucking combos? Ha ha ha! You want us to be we can play interrupted? I don't like hand trap format. I think I've made that clear now. So yes, uh, this week in Yu-Gi-Oh Go Rush, uh, episode two, um, they fucking just go for it i yeah i this is a weirdly dense episode it doesn't feel it because in the grand scheme of things not a lot really happens especially by Yu-Gi-Oh standards but i feel exhausted <laughs> watching this for just the things the show makes me think about and the way it did certain things all of which we will try and get across in a 10 minute video format uh, so let's, uh, let's get right on to it. So this episode opens with, I can't even remember the sequence of events things went and that's how freaking baffled this left me. But yeah, no, so if I'm remembering this correctly, episode opens with Udius looking at his deck on the front step, uh, when if I'm getting the name right, Yui is like, you can't do that. We got to go or something. And, uh, then we cut to opening credits and let me just say, this op is fire like this is cool this is fun and i liked the two uh sevens ops a lot they were great songs that fit the show's tone but i did kind of miss that feeling of like epic card game toy commercial nonsense that other Yu Gi Oh ops did and so to hear that this one kind of brings that back is kind of exciting i also think it's smart Considering the ED sounds very sevens, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think making the OP the thing that will bring you into the show the most, uh, having a very unique, different feel from the last one, I think bodes well for the show's attempting to feel different. Uh, but yeah, no, so then we get into the actual episode itself, where Udius and the gang are still going after the cat from last week, or are they? Uh, we also see that Udius's spaceship is tiny. A thing they didn't tell us could happen last week. So it was just there. And I was like, wait, what? Huh? But yeah, no. So they go after the cat. And Udius catches the cat. And you want, uh, Yui doesn't. And what I like about that scene is it shows that Udius isn't incompetent. Like, he is ignorant of our world. And there is a lot to learn. But he's not an idiot, which I think is a problem a lot of sci-fi tends to do when it's the storyline of like the alien coming to Earth and they have to learn. A lot of them will just take every cheap comedy gag to treat the alien like they're just an idiot. Like they can't do anything. They can't function. We saw it last week when Udius melted a phone. But to kind of see that that has already kind of been abandoned and we see that he's competent, he's intelligent. Yeah, he's kind of like in an unknown space, but I kind of like the way they throw in little scenes of him observing and then kind of interpreting. Like we get the scene with the cat and the way he's pleasant towards it and how he's able to keep it calm because, well, he's smart. We uh, The bit where they're at the woman's house giving the cat back, the way he kind of looks and then bows, the way he kind of like interprets what's around him. I like that these little details are included. They really make the character feel very fleshed out in just a lot of little ways more of which are coming by the way but yeah no so then we get well the other one and that is when they hand the cat over uh it's a cat the big thing with the cat is that and i remember singing this when i saw it's like oh it's an airbender cat because it's got the arrow pointing down i didn't think that was important i just thought it was a goofy cat design but here's the thing the show knows you're probably not going to remember what the cat from last week looked like but yuamu does and that's why this is kind of clever because Yuamu starts piecing together something ain't right here. It's a different cat from last week. So that's a little strange, but it was still in the area that uh, the cat should be in. So that kind of makes her wonder about things. We then get our next little bit. Also, I like the bit where uh, Yui's just kind of like, yeah, she smelt nice. <laughs> oh, I like it when Yu-Gi-Oh characters are horny. 
Uh, but yeah, no, so they're going back and then we pull out to reveal that our characters are being watched and we find out Yu-Gi-Oh has their own MLB, MIB. <laughs> That's right. The fucking men in black are in that show. They don't call it that probably for copyright reasons or just because they thought this sounded funnier. Probably the second one. Uh, but yeah, no. We in one scene find out aliens have been a part of the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe the whole time. They've been among us and there is an organization in charge of them. This is why the episode feels dense to me because they throw in this big a fucking bombshell about this 25 year old universe that just has me going, wait, what? Uh, there's aliens just everywhere in this office and they're all like goofy designs. And we find out that, like, they were watching the ship the whole time. They watched the two kids enter. And you know what? That is very smart world building right there, people. You see, in a lesser show, what would happen is that they would just explain to you this exists. You wouldn't get that visual of their organization. And by getting that visual and just seeing that there is organization to it they are planning they are doing things by the book they have procedures this is how you make a world feel lived in i don't need a million references and easter eggs to other things just one little scene explaining that there is a plan there is a way things are handled and there is an execution to it all of these shut up train all of these are just little things that make the world feel real to me but yeah, no, so we find our character of the day. I guess he's sort of like a rival. He's in the promotional material. We see him in the OP and ED. I kind of have a feeling he'll probably be a Sawatori type, like a sort like a rival, but we'll have like a rival who's more plot intertwined as we go, which we have seen. Uh, but yeah, no, so uh, then they go in to undercover. To, the guy goes in to investigate and be undercover. Uh, and this is where we get just that other side of Yuamu's intelligence. She's just kind of like, you're lying, you're not a client. Because he says he needs to find his lost dog. She's like, you don't have a dog, you have cat hair on you. Now, why he didn't just say lost cat, uh, I've been thinking about it. Maybe just kind of like, well, they might get suspicious because they just looked for a lost cat or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, no. And so then the cat from last week shows up revealing it's a talking alien cat. Why? Why the fuck not? <laughs> but yeah, no. So Talking Alien Cat reveals their organization and he's part of it. And they're going to capture Udius and the rest of his pe and his ship and decide that if they are bad, they will be sent off the earth. And if they're not bad, they will basically be monitored and under the strict control of these people. <laughs> no good option here. But yeah, no. So uh, the guy from Sevens, more on that in a minute, uh, tells Udius to run away. But naturally, the guy who is threatening the two twins uh, makes you basically forces Udius to be like, no, I will not abandon my friends. And he comes out and he's all like, it's time to duel. And they duel and the duel's kind of boring because uh, all they did was just normal summons. And we learned what monster effects were. <laughs> OK, uh, did we need to know that? Like. It's just weird because this one is a continuation of Sevens. So naturally it's a jumping on point, but it still assumes that you saw Sevens. So in the first episode of Sevens, we had monster effects and spells and traps and all this stuff. Why push it back this fucking far? Yeah, the shtick is Udius is new and he doesn't know what he's doing, but that was the point of the first episode duel. It's the second episode duel. I kind of feel like there should be a little more intelligence from him. I'm a little afraid that, like, by the time we get to, like, episode 12, that's when we'll see what a spell card does. But, yeah, no, that was kind of a strange... Uh, the duel itself is kind of whatever. Uh, we see Udius' ace. It's nice to see the 2500 attack point ace come back. This one is okay looking. Kind of like Firewall, but not as busy. Yet it's got the Odd Eye style Konami orbs. But yeah, no, so then um, while the duel is going on, we get a scene that I want to like but can't. And that is that when Udius learns what a tribute summon is, he draws his cards for turn. He's got a tribute monster that can win him the duel, but he doesn't want to tribute summon 
because since he sort of views his cards in sort of like an extension of himself, it reminds him of when his commander died telling Udius to go save the day. And this is good. I, I like the idea of Udius having drama. I like the idea of there being some complexity to his past. And obviously we know this guy's coming back because he's in the promo material and the opening in the ED. He's the blonde dude. So he'll be back and I can't wait to see what happens there. But my issue with here is that it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, this is a big deal. Udius' father figure, the person he looks up to, was taken to him presumably fairly recently because Udius seems to be a kid. Um, so why is why was this not a thing? Like, my point is, why did you not find a way to integrate it into the beginning of the episode? Like, yeah, we needed to wait to introduce all the alien stuff, but I feel like if you're going to bring up something big like that, it should have more build up than just, oh yeah, doing this thing in a children's card game reminds me of my mentor. <laughs> um, it, it's good, and I'm really interested to see where it goes, and the actor does a good job with what he's given, but it kind of just comes out of nowhere. Having said that, I do like the resolution to it, and that being that the sort of rival character is just like, look, he didn't die, he didn't sacrifice himself the way you think, he trusted you. And he was carrying that trust onto you, and that's how victory works. And that's how then Udius is able to win. So I like the idea that already this character has more than just being a one-note joke or a one-note rival. Uh, I like the fact that Udius learns and grows. All that's very important. I just kind of feel like if we had better build-up, it would have been okay. I still really liked it, uh, but I definitely think there were a couple issues that could have been fixed away with just a few lines of dialogue earlier in the episode. But yeah, no, so Udius wins, and the M.I.K. are going to leave. And again, we just get another smart scene with Yuamu where she's just kind of like, Oh no, we saved you. It's like, why? Because there's 8.88 million of Udius's people, all of whom will fuck you up. <laughs> That's good. And I like the fact that she sort of like uses it as a threat but she didn't lead to it. She let the guys come to the conclusion that Udius is all right and then threw in that extra, but if you mess with us anyways, we got uh, solutions. Basically that idea that showing that Udius is good, but don't mess with us. It's very like clever writing on the way she acts and the way she conducts herself. So yeah, that was this episode. Uh, and I should probably now go into the very strange Sevens Connections. Uh, we'll just do it real quick because we're going on a long time here. So, in this episode, we find out that our two main characters, last name Oda, inherited this company from their parents. A are they Yuga's children? Because that's Austin as friend. Like, that's who that is. We see several other Sevens characters as well, like the sushi girl and the camera chick. So, they're all here. Where's Yuga? Is he dead? Like, are these, are these his children? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> are these his children and he's gone? Are they aliens? Like, did Yuga make it with an alien woman while he was in space for two years? What's going on? <laughs> but I like the fact that the show isn't leaning into it very heavy. It's allowing it to be its own thing while having these details in the background for us to pick up on. And hopefully we will get a resolution to it sooner rather than later. But yeah, give me your thoughts on all that below. And as for the TCG question of the week, lightning round, we got to get through this. Uh, so the YCS was this past weekend. Oh, I loved watching a live in person YCS again. No offense to all the attempts at virtual Yu-Gi-Oh and all that. You did your part to keep Yu-Gi-Oh going. But come on, guys. This is where real Yu-Gi-Oh happens. And I know the finals had its issues. I will not address that here. Uh, but all in all, what'd you think of the tournament? Was it fun to see a YCS? Yeah, I know it sucked all the Floanderies and the prank kids, but give me your thoughts about it below. Uh, and as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join me for God knows what going forward.